cream, please. Oh, well, I suppose it is. I saw this boat in half and repaired it with only flex. While the leaves start crisping up with arms frost looming, the squaw begins to scavenge for its favorite food nuts. This squirrel is not the only one. We interrupt your program to announce that our very own Monkey's Eyebrow Little League Baseball team has won the pennant for the southernmost corner of South Dakota. Congratulations to all the players, especially the coach's son, who pitched every single inning of every single game. We also like to congratulate Aiden, Bryden, Caden, Brendan, Braden, Auden, and Caden with a Y. We now return you back to your scheduled program. The Falcon, with its stunning speed and claws of steel, snatches the squirrel. Unfortunately for the squirrel, this is the fourth time it's gotten snatched this week. The squirrel then softly. After being snatched by the Falcon, he continues forging for acorns. The number of squirrels in this very park will decide whether it stashes them in one tree or multiple feet underground. Breaking news, Hurricane Delta is now going to make a second landfall in New Orleans tonight. Several casualties have been reported thus far, and it's truly a disaster uh, never seen before. Uh, President Trump is expected to survey the area when his golf tournament ends in 10 days. Sources say that he's up three over... We interrupt your breaking news segment to inform you of a true miracle that happened today on Earth. The Duchess of Cambridge has given birth to yet another child. This one will be named George the Seventh. Isn't he just adorable? Trish, couldn't you just eat him? to season nine of the transcript. As we ease into this new school year, many of us still have questions and concerns about the remote learning plan. Here to answer some of those questions is our associate principal, Kara Sheridan. I think one of the major things that the district and our school have committed to is uh, professional development for our staff so that they can do a really great job um, teaching and, in, and supporting students. Um, the staff and faculty have been so committed um, to learning how to do remote learning better. Um, they spent the first two weeks of um, sort of the traditional school year attending a ton of uh, professional development activities and learning about how to use Zoom and Google Meets and other um, um, platforms um, in a dynamic way so they can meet individually and in small groups and with the whole class and be able to use the different features to really enhance the experience. Prior to the closure, the faculty and staff were working on um, the flex block as a time in the day where students could connect with teachers and, um, and ask for extra help. We recognized that there were a lot of times where kids were really, really booked in the afternoons and in after school activities, the play or the, um, the musical or athletics or other extracurriculars, work, things like that. Um, and so the, perp the original purpose was to create time during the day for kids to sign up to get support from one or more of their teachers. Um, we've had to shift that a little bit. And so instead of signing up, what students are going to do is just um, on Mondays, for example, the flex is assigned to period one. And so students can just sign back in to period one um, in the middle of the day and ask for extra help. So if there's a question about um, a, a math problem that they've been working on in class and they just need to confirm that they understand what's going on. That's a great time to go check back in and ask for some follow-up with that. We're prepared.
prepared to hear from people, hear from students and families and faculty and, and make adjustments. Uh, so if something, if something doesn't feel right or it's not working, we need to hear about it so that we can um, reflect and figure out how to fix it. If things are going well, we want to hear about that too. Often it's, um, we, we only hear about the negative things or the things that are really hard, but we wanna celebrate the really great work that people are doing. And so if a student has a really great class or you know, is working on a, um, a project in concepts and art, and it, it, you know, we wanna hear about it. We wanna showcase it and celebrate it um, so that people know that there's some really great things happening amidst all of the chaos as well. Thank you, Ms. Sheridan. To get a teacher's perspective on the new learning format, we spoke with one of our very own history teachers, Mr. Cody. You know, I think that prepping for this year is a little different because I don't, I have to find a really healthy balance for what's going to work for the students, what's going to keep them moving, but not overwhelm them. And the hope is, is that it's not like last spring where there was just almost so little work that it, it felt like almost harder to do. Mm -hmm. um, if we can kind of get the like kid humming a little bit and again, not overwhelm or not do too much screen time, then I think that would be great. I mean, I'm just really looking forward to being in the classroom with students again. I mean, that's my thing, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> I think that, I think, I feel like the administration and, and the teachers all want to improve as we go. I think that Northampton probably made the right choice, but we'll get to look at it again in November. And it's up to the school committee. This is representational democracy at its best. You know, provost doesn't decide this. Ballon court doesn't decide this. The school committee decides this. They're elected by the people of Northampton. My advice to you guys is to find ways to take care of your physicality as, what, as we're, we're trying to try to take care of your spirits and your emotional life. Take care of your physical body as much as possible. Wake up. Go outside, eat breakfast outside. If you can eat breakfast outside, eat it. If you have a break at lunch, go outside, get the sun on your face, shower, you know, uh, work out, bike, you know, whatever it is, find something physical, really focus on your physical because if that physical piece goes, nothing's gonna work for you. But meanwhile, if the physical piece is in there and you're really feeling good, it, um, it all, I really do think that's the core from which the learning can happen. Thank you, Mr. Cody. And as for incoming freshmen, still wondering what this year is going to look like, we spoke to our class presidents and asked them if they had any advice for starting the school year. Yeah, I think it's definitely like an anticlimactic start to high school, but it's what we have. So it's important to just go with that and make the best of it. I guess my advice to incoming freshmen would just be to get involved with things they are passionate about. I mean, um, there are still like clubs and sports, so that's one way to do it. Also like um, reach out to your teachers, be kind to your teachers, because this definitely isn't easy for them either. It's really gonna be, it's gonna be way harder. You're gonna have to put yourself out there and let people get to know you. It is going to be through a screen most likely, but kind of don't be afraid to show your personality because you're gonna make new friends and new experiences no matter what. It just might take a little more. Yeah, also you guys have like three more years, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not all over yet. You still have so much time. My hopes for this year would be just that our community can remain optimistic and make the best out of whatever happens. The obvious hope as senior class president is that we're able to have senior events in the spring, but that's out of all of our control, so. Yeah, I think that's our main priority right now, keeping everyone safe and still being able to have fun with making everyone comfortable and making sure no one really misses out on anything, even though that might happen with all of us, but as long as we're all kind of willing to go through this together and see what we can do this year, I think that we'll still have a great and a very memorable year for everyone. 
Hey everyone, welcome back to NHS. I wish we could see you all in person or get to meet you for the first time, but we'll have to settle for Zoom classes instead. So like inside all day, especially as seniors, we began thinking about what we want to do outside of school, what really makes us happy. We began looking after high school to people who are doing what they love as their career, or at least a job, living unconventional lives and unconventional lifestyles. Over the course of this semester, we plan to interview people with all kinds of jobs and all kinds of lifestyles, hoping to find what makes them happy. We want to find out how they broke into the industry, how they found their passion, and advice they might have for somebody trying to break into a similar industry, or at least just try to find the same meaning in their career. After, we plan to talk to an NHS alumni and student who's on a similar career path and see what they think of their journey in 2020. We have lots of ideas and super exciting people for you to meet, but really, we want to hear from you guys, and we want to do end conventional careers that you're interested in. So please reach out if you have any ideas of any people who you'd like us to interview or careers you'd like to explore. Hope you're able to make the best out of Zoom class and have the best few weeks of school possible. We'll see you next week with an unconventional career and lifestyle that you can try out. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to tune in next Friday for our very first full-length episode of this season.